My game. <laughs> Day game? I said, I didn't tell you my game. Are you are you good at playing games? Yeah, uh, I'll play along. Tell me what it is. <laughs> I'll follow uh, Okay, so it's really easy. So my game is, because I just like to let people know that Black psychologists is normal people. Right, and right. so it's Black love. So all you have to do is name five things. I'm going to give you a category. You're going to name five things in that category in 10 seconds. And the catch is you can't say um, uh, ah, or any filler words. Mm. Just say the things. That's tough, but let's try it. <laughs> Okay, give me a second. I got to put my stopwatch on. I think you'll be able to do this one pretty easy, though. Okay. Okay. So your category is influential black psychologists. You're going to name five in 10 seconds. No ums, us, eyes. Go. Naeem Akbar, Kobe Cambon, Robert Williams, Francis Sumner, Wade Nobles. Excellent, excellent. You did that really good. This is about five more I'd like to mention, but I ran out of time. Okay, let's do it one more time. I'm gonna put a little twist on it though, okay? All right. Let's see. Okay, so this time the category is you gotta name five women. Five women that are influential black psychologists. Okay. Go. Aaronette White. Um, Nancy Boy Franklin, Linda James Myers. Time's up. <laughs> yeah. But give me the other two, because we need to know the other two. <laughs> I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> Katora Whitehurst and Mimi Clark. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. No, I think it's because people, I'm asking people to do something that is unexpected. And so always, your brain. I'm always criticizing people for not knowing black women psychologists. Not, you know, my students, I'm always uh, shaming them for, for them not knowing black women psychologists. <laughs> and although I know about 10 to 15, not quickly. So I should, I, should, I have to do better. Mm, it's all just part of the process. But let's just jump in. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Ife Tayo Ojelade. I am a licensed psychologist. I'm also the executive director of A Healing Paradigm here in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for coming on this Friday afternoon and having, having taking the space to listen to this conversation, which I think is really important. My colleague, Dr. Uh, Sean Utsi is here today, and we're gonna be talking about the history of black psychology in a very important documentary that he has, he has, um, he made, <laughs> I don't know why my words keep coming together this morning. And so we're going to jump into this conversation. Dr. Uzi, thank you for coming this morning. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Um, I want to start out. So this may seem like a little bit of something that's basic, but we have folks that are mental health professionals, but then we also have folks that listen that aren't mental health professionals. And I see we have folks that are listening now. So if you are listening, do me a favor and share your energy with Dr. Utsi and put something in the chat and just say hello. Um, start out by just telling us, kind of just defining Black psychology. What is that? Wow. Well, there, there are several scholarly answers to that in terms of mm -hmm. different schools of black psychology. Right. Uh, bicultural, uh, um, radical, Afrocentrist, etc. But those are, are uh, really esoteric kind of inscriptions that, that scholars banter about. But the, the reality, black psychology, um, and there are two approaches. One is an African centered uh, the other is black psychology or psychology of the black experience. Mm -hmm. and psychology of the black experience tries to interpret the reality of, of African descent folks in their context using a variety of methods, particularly, but particularly European centered psychology. Got That's it. psychology of the black experience. Black psychology, black slash African psychology grounds itself in an African centered paradigm. It doesn't replicate European ideas of the world uh, and of culture and of the self. It centers the definitions of the self, the cosmos, uh, and reality in an african centered context. And from there, they build theories, concepts, practices, et cetera, to uh, apply to the behavior and personality of African descent people. 
So when I was a younger psychologist, I was always trying to figure out this difference between, because some people would say Black psychology and some people would say African-centered psychology. And I was like, what's the difference? So it sounds like um, you kind of describe it. It's like the Black psychology. Tell me if I'm wrong. So Black psychology would be focused um, generally on kind of the lived experiences of African-Americans or people of African descent. I shouldn't say African-Americans, people of African descent, but using Western psycho psychological practices where... Well, well let me Go clarify. Mm -hmm. uh, psychology of the Black experience is what you're describing. Okay. People use African Black sometimes interchangeably or mm -hmm. African slash Black. I know Colby Cambone, uh used them interchangeably and African slash black psychology. Okay. Um, but I'm distinguishing between African slash black psychology from psychology of the black experience. Okay. And most times when you're taking a class in undergrad, mm -hmm. right, most times you're talking about psychology of the black experience, mm -hmm. the impact of racism, uh, the impact of, 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 of poverty, the cultural influences, all these things reflect reflect the black experience. Mm -hmm. But looking at uh, developing notions of the self, notions of personality, uh, theories of behavior, um, African black psychology begins that discussion from an African worldview. Got it. So I thought this was interesting. I was in Kenya um, about five years ago, and I was at the East African Psychological Associations Conference. And so these were um, mostly Kenyans, but there were some folks from you know other areas uh, surrounding um, countries that were there. And one of the main speakers got up and said, um, it, it really kind of promoting kind of Western white I European ideas of psychology. It was like, cause we don't have a psychology. And I was like, <laughs> everybody does. Every single community has a psychology. I was really shocked by that. So it was like shocking because they don't call it psychology, right? Like, right. like in many parts of the continent, they don't call religion religion, right? It's it's a way of life. It's a way of understanding of being in the world, and like what what we would describe as religion for them would not be a a organization or a particular entity or theoretical framework for understanding God, it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. And likewise, psychology would be found in those systems for understanding life, right? Mm -hmm. so it wouldn't be um, called psychology. Okay. It wouldn't be a study of the mind, right? Um, the way we have compartmentalized psychology in the Western world. Right. Or, Psychology began as a study of the soul, as the word psyche implies, um, but it's evolved to mean the mind. Yes, I, 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 I can see what they mean. They don't have a psychology, but it's mm -hmm. not what they mean. So, though, even when I pointed that out, so I was there because that was my presentation. So to point out, like, so everybody has it. It's just called something different. They looked at me like I was crazy and told right. Right. <laughs> I'm like, no. So there, there's something here within communities. There are ways that people have healing. And that's one of the things that I noticed in your documentary that really struck me is that you were showing, you know, parts of rituals that are just things that happen in everyday life if in um, in continental African societies, regardless of whether or not people label themselves as Christian or Muslim and things like that, there's still these rituals that happen. And that's part of a psychological intervention that we don't necessarily look at as Western trained psychologists. We don't look at it the same way. Right. Absolutely. I, I think you're 100 percent right. In fact, most of the footage in those videos I shot and they were either Muslim communities or Christian communities. But as you pointed out, the, the, rituals, the rituals supersede that particular uh, religious orientation. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, the religious orientation accommodates their worldview, which is in the traditions of the rituals that, that we saw. Um, particularly fascinating was the uh, Kumba Lamba ceremony mm -hmm. that was central to the, the documentary. Um, just the whole, the whole, 
you know, week long ceremony and the meaning and the interpretations reflect a psychology, right? It's, it's about uh, harmony and, and balance. And I think uh, in the documentary, Bob Away talks about the whole psychostasis and the idea of this, this balance between one's uh, spiritual self and, and how they live their life. Mm -hmm. and, and that we all strive to find that balance. And then in the end, we are judged according to how well uh, we lived in terms of finding that balance between truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity, and all these uh, um, principles of my eye. And so I think it's, it's not really uh, very different from what we call Western psychology, because what we call Western psychology, in many instances, is African psychology repackaged. And I think <laughs> You know any any bones about that? We know that Jung and and, and Freud studied uh, deep right. the concepts and, and, and ethos of African societies to understand the unconscious and mm -hmm. subconscious mind, and, and so it's it's really documented. They documented it themselves. Mm -hmm. We sometimes we like to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, because we've been, you know, felt for the three card Monty trick whereby they changed the label and we think they invented it. So it's not really always Western psychology. And, and let me just also say this last thing mm -hmm. uh -huh. in front of my mouth. That's fine. That it, it's, it's, we don't have to be orthodox in our approach to African psychology. Uh, culture evolves. Culture has always evolved, right? African culture is what African people do, right? And, and so, and, and, and African people are, are wherever African people are found, not just in the continent, right? Mm -hmm. So even the things that we often differentiate as African American culture, mm -hmm. is really African culture, right? Because the whole African uh, aesthetic of, of, of improvisation, mm -hmm. right, is what has created African American culture. Right. We took nothing and made something of it, right? Mm -hmm. We took nothing and, and, and created a blueprint for living and surviving. That's African culture. So, I mean, I, and I talk about that a lot. I'm um, thinking about the ways that we do stuff. Like uh, improvisation is a part of healing. <laughs> <laughs> the way that we um, engage each other. I remember th there's so many things that are just kind of part of our everyday living that we just take for granted. For example, I remember um, one of the Jagnas, um, the elder psychologist that was talking to me this summer, and he was making this point that like when you meet somebody new and you don't know them, there's a dance that we do with each other, a verbal dance um, to get to know somebody. So you don't just, you know, I, you ask how your mom and them is. So like every time I see you, how's your family, you know, but you don't like jump in and start asking like real deep personal questions. But Sometimes, you know, if you're dealing with European Americans, then they'll ask like personal questions. And they're like, whoa, whoa, I don't, I don't know you like that. And that is a cultural difference. And I, I always knew that there's a different way that I navigate in spaces, but I wasn't necessarily attributing that specifically to a cultural way of moving, even though I want to talk to graduate students. And if they're in a white program, I'm like, OK, so you may have a supervisor that's asking you a lot of personal questions and you don't want to answer those questions. So then you have to be aware of how to navigate that. And I think being able to talk about those things and putting it from a cultural perspective is really important and not pathologizing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that yeah, so talk a little bit just kind of um, before there was this, this concept of black psychology here, like where psychologists were saying, no, that there is this concept of black African centered psychology, then uh, Western notions of psychology were doing a lot of pathologizing us. Can you kind of just talk a little bit about the history of Western psychology? Yeah. Well, the, the history of Western psychology is the dehumanization of African people. It really, I mean, you'd be surprised how much energy Western psychology put toward the dehumanization of African people, right? In terms of many disciplines have content areas 
that you can see, you know, personality, intelligence testing, uh, 